Billy Napier talking about his quarterback, Anthony Richardson. All right, where are you on Anthony Richardson? One week, great. Last week, played okay, but didn't throw it very much. Um, eight completions, 66 yards, two of those on the first series. What happened? Why not more? Was that the plan? How, how, how did you assess that? I think that was largely the plan last week. I think Anthony was pretty banged up. This is the, this is the biggest game Anthony's ever played in this weekend. I, I mean, I, I firmly believe that. I think we're at the point now where these next couple games, um, you've got to show who you are. And the issue with that is, is I'm not sure anybody really knows who Anthony is. Like, I, I think we can all agree that he throws the ball better than what we thought he did a couple years ago, right? Um, he's a little bit more polished as a passer than what I think everybody thought. But it's not his personality. It's not his DNA to sit back there and try to throw it. And when you have a quarterback that's banged up, that, that likes to run, um, that's what you go to, right? You go to, okay, well, the threat's enough. It should open up some things. And it's not. It's not. They don't have that game-breaking speed anywhere to where taking one out of the defense puts you in a plus situation. Um, and so I think Anthony's just got to do what he did against Tennessee, and he's literally got to be a factor in every single play. And I think that is who he is. But I think at the same time, he's been limited in his ability to do that um, the last couple of weeks. What do you think he'll be at for LSU, 80% physically, or is it not even that? Um, I think if he's at 80%, it's that's been a probably good about, week. yeah, that's probably about where he was Tennessee. I think he's shown he can play through that. I think anybody at 80% right now is pretty dang good. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's the hope. Yeah. And I haven't, I haven't talked to him. I'm just kind of putting the, well, I have talked to him, but not about that. I'm just kind of putting the pieces together that I've seen and kind of what the game plan was. And then I go back to the week before where he had the 45 yarder that he completely let off the gas on. And I'm just kind of drawing my own conclusions. He doesn't need me texting going, Hey dude, what hurts now? Sure. I I get that. And and he's so enticing because that rollout touchdown throw to Pearsall Mm -hmm. is phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and he, I mean, he had one dropped early in the game or in the first half. Um, but I think he's at that point, right, maturity-wise, where he, he's got to get rid of that play. And I think that's the – if I could push a button and fix anything on Anthony, it's – the last play's over, dude. Like, take a lesson from it, but you've got to move on. And I think he's he's just got to get past that part right there. Because in his – there's a lot of pressure on Anthony. But I think he puts more pressure on himself than any of us do or any fan does. And I think he's got to learn to just be a little bit more free spirited. Yeah, and that. I and I believe that. And to that to that point, as a fan watching, media member, fan guy watching that doesn't know nearly what you guys know and doesn't know him, it looks to me like he is not. He is a tentative runner. Mm-hmm. Now, is that a because he's hurt? B because they've beat into his head. Don't run. Uh, C, because he's heard everybody talk about what a great runner he is. He wants to prove that he's a good passer. Or am I just imagining it? You know what I mean, Denny? But I but it look, I can tell you that when I look at the, the real good running quarterbacks, Tebow, Cam Newton, Manziel, uh, 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 Jalen Hurts even now, uh, Cam Newton when he played, the, the real Vince Young, they couldn't wait to run. Mm-hmm. They, they almost would rather run, and they, would, and they would look for someone to hit while they ran. I think part of that's he's been told don't do that because mm-hmm. we can't. But, but am I reading that wrong? Do you? Do you that, no, that's I, what I, I think see. No, I think you're dead on with all of it. I, I think it's a combination of everything you just said. I think it's a combination of of spending an off season really working and and I'm guilty of this, working on throwing the ball right, right, and just getting that into his head, and then hearing, you know, his top five draft pick and top five draft picks need to be able to throw the ball right. That's right. I get it. I think it's all that, and then I'm going to take the approach that. I don't see many called runs for him. So I'm going to assume that they don't really want him running that much. And there aren't very, there was one quarterback sweep or quarterback yep. power. Yeah, boy, I, you talk about called runs. And, and on RPO, I never know right. whether that's, whether right. it's, uh, you're supposed to hand it off or whether it's a real read play. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's probably all of that. It just looks, I want to, as a Gator fan, I want to see him run like a son of a gun. I want to see him run all the time. Hendon Hooker can't wait to run. Yep. It looks like to me, yep. can't wait to run. Yep. It looks to me like, because Anthony's a really fluid athlete. Very fluid. But when he's running, it doesn't, it looks a little laborious, doesn't it? Like it, It's like, okay, dude, yes. you're an elite athlete, yes. and it doesn't look like you're just moving the way it's you tentative. move with everything else. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, how many times have we seen him take yeah. off like a quarterback draw and he runs right into somebody? Yeah, yeah. Right. Whereas last year when he ran, it was the opposite. It was the opposite. Yeah. So, so, so you, so with that, that to me, I think that's the key to the rest of their season. I think he, if he'll take off, I don't think they're going to win games with him doing a lot of passing, and that's not just on him. That's the receivers aren't very good. That that you know what I mean. I just the, their offensive line is built to run. Yes, I, I they've got great running backs. I'd like yeah. to see I'd like to see him run it fifteen times. 60, would you feel that way? I mean, yeah, and and again, it seems like Napier is kind of picking his spots with it because against Tennessee, he runs it seventeen times. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he ran it a lot against Utah, but then in the games that aren't the quote big games, he doesn't run it. It's almost like. Florida views themselves as being better than what they really are. And they're like, we don't really need it in these games. But in these four games, the big games, we're going to really need it. Because, again, I, 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 he carried 17 times against Tennessee. They've got to have this game. They have all these recruits coming in. It's against LSU, who's won the last three. Billy Napier was coaching in Louisiana. You know this one means a lot to him. I've got to think Richardson's running it 17 times against LSU Saturday night. I I agree. I, the one thing that none of us know is because Billy Napier runs that quarterback room. He is the quarterback coach. Correct. Is on Monday, I guess they're off on Monday, on Tuesday when they start to install, what are they installing? Are they installing based off what kind of what we talked about with the Colts? Are they installing based on what they're strong at? Or is Billy Napier, uh, we're going to take advantage of what this team does and what does that look like and what does that dictate for 15? That's the, I've never asked that, but as listen to you guys, like I'm going to ask that. Yeah. I, I want to know that. Like, is, is this a game plan? Maybe, and I don't know, maybe is he banged up and is that the game plan or is this a game plan because you're trying to expose what Missouri wasn't good at? Um, I, I, I'm curious on that myself. I, uh, if I'm calling plays this week, I've said this every week. Play one is quarterback draw, by the way, which would always work because nobody expects to draw a play, and I'm the only guy in the world that knows this, so so tell all your coaches this, Danny, because I'm trying okay. to help you here. Okay. Nobody ever expects to draw a play on the first play of the game. Nobody draw expects plays, it on first and ten. Draw, right. Draw plays are set up. Ever. So, so yeah. quarterback draw, first play. See if you can get that done for me. Okay. But, but then after that, I would call so many running plays, and I would tell him, don't be tentative to take off. You know, Because yeah. guess what? If he takes off a few times, then you got to defend him differently. And we don't even need it to be home runs. Right. We just... Seven right. yards, 12 Correct. yards. Correct. Like, you, don't, you don't have to go get to 45. If, right. if you look and you see somebody, and beyond him you see somebody, right. well, then just make the first guy miss and then get down. We don't need you to go 60 every time. Yeah, so I uh, – but when you talk to him, do you – and the private stuff is between you and he as far as the technical stuff, but just the big picture stuff. Is he confident? Is he, mm. is he, is he, is he angry? I mean, they're four and two. They're not two and four. And and he's had some good. He's played good football. Where is he? Where is his head? He's great. Yeah. He's he's you know I'll I'll say this now again after Kentucky he was low low low. Yeah, you told us. Um, it's not that at all yeah. anymore. He's he's back to Anthony. Yeah. He's having fun playing football. I mean he wants to play better of course, but I think you know for Anthony what's happened and Vernell Brown is maybe the best piece that Florida has on their staff. Yeah, a lot of people say that he's he's unbelievable and he helped with this. Anthony needed to find out what he was going to do Sunday through Friday to get away from the game, and they found that. Like Anthony loves helping people. Yeah, he loves volunteering, like behind the scenes, and that's what makes him happy. And that that's he's doing a lot of that kind of stuff. And and so I think mentally he's in a great place. I just he needs to see more, and he needs to be more assertive. He needs to know that he has the ability to take over the game, and he's have the the flexibility and the freedom to do that. Yeah, that's a great point. He he's good enough that even at an elite level of college football can take over games. He took over the LSU, I mean the, the Utah game. He took over the LSU game in the second half last year. That's right. He can do that. Is it? That's a great point. It, does he have the freedom to do it? Mm-hmm. Does he have the willingness to do it? You know. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, he threw for 167 yards against LSU last year and had 37 more running it and a four, half. four touchdowns and a half. And they yeah. were dead in the water when he came in. Yeah. Right. I mean, it was it was bad. They couldn't do anything. So, yeah. again, from a mental standpoint, I asked you about Trevor with the Colts. Does it give you some encouragement, optimism, that when he sees that helmet, he knows that – and I get they lost the game by seven, but – uh, but do you think when he sees that helmet, he's going to say, okay, I have success against this team? Yeah, I mean, at this point, his first start was against Georgia, right? Generational defense there. He should have no doubt at any any college game right now 
that he can do that, that he can take that over. I mean, he's played in some of the biggest games that he could possibly play in. He's had success. He's failed, like the whole thing. And he realizes, like, if I fail, I'm going to wake up tomorrow. The sun's going to be up. It's all good. Mom and brother are still there, right? And that's all that really matters. So I, I hope he plays with a little bit more of a freedom this week. And, and I and am anticipating that he will. We'll take a break. Uh, what about Jordan Travis? I'm up, some down. We'll have Denny assess that after this. It's 1010XL and 92.5 FM.